What is going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Mask and Health Solutions Podcast, where I am joined by a legend in Dr. Ann Trung, who I was just telling, I discovered her from an old penis pump video, and, you know, it was one of those things that I really would use as a reference because it was spectacular. But first and foremost, Dr. Trung, how are you today? I am fine. Thank you for having me here, CJ. I'm looking forward to our talk today. Oh, man, I'm I'm very excited. I was telling my wife about this, too. I'm like, well, there's always so much to learn. And Dr. Ann is a wealth of knowledge, and I can't wait to pick your brain. And, you know, like we were just talking off air. So I'm like, hey, why not jump in with that? Because I know this is something you're passionate about. But what? Why, why penis pumping? Does it actually work? Is there any hype around it? Or is it just a crazy novelty idea? What What's your take on it? Right. My take on it is unlike anybody else. I do not regard that as a sex toy. And believe it or not, um, you know, I treated over like 7,000 men. I would say probably 95% of them do not know what a penis pump is or what it, what it looks like. I have no idea. <laughs> and they regard it as a sex toy or is it, or it's a fraud or something. When you first say penis pump, people think it's something fraud, something, you know, a, a, a spam or, mm. you know, some weird sex toy when it's not. So let me first describe what it is. So it's, uh, I wish I had one here with me, but, um, but you know, it's 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 a cylinder, and what you do, you when you if you use a, a manually or with electric pump, it creates negative pressure. So it's kind of like a vacuum. It mm-hmm. suction your penis into it, and it actually will give you an erection without you trying to get an erection. And so, uh, and it looks like a cylinder. It looks like like that, and that's it. So it comes in either electric or manual. And uh, it depends on what pump you use. So that's essentially what a penis pump is. I'm a big advocate of men using penis pump because I call it taking the penis to the gym. All right. (laughs) Why do we go to the gym? We go to the gym because we do chest press, shoulder press, right? When we do that, blood blood goes into the muscle. The muscle expands. The muscle gets oxygen. And the muscle kind of rip a little bit. And, and the, if you do it repeatedly, what happened? Your muscle gets bigger, right? Or mm-hmm. hypertrophy. But yeah. the same thing happened to the penis muscle. The, the penis is the muscle. It is a muscle. Think of it no differently. So when you use the penis pump, it creates a negative pressure to there's more blood gushing into the penis. It brings oxygen to the penis. It expands the muscle of the penis, right? So it, 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 it does the same thing that you would do for a biceps curl or shoulder press, right? Mm-hmm. And, and then you would leave it in the cylinder for about 10 minutes, controlling the, the suction, and then you, 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 let, you let the pressure go out and then take it out. So it's taking your penis to the gym, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have ED to use it. I have a lot of patients that does not have issues and they use it. It's kind of like a young man like yourself who's healthy. Well, you go to you go to gym too, so that way you have good muscle, you feel good, you look good, you you know you you look attractive wearing clothes. It's the same thing about your penis. Even though people don't see your penis, but you look at it every day. You mm-hmm. you go to the bathroom holding it every day. You should treat your penis the same way that you would treat uh, your muscles. That you that's why you go to the gym. So I call it taking your penis to the gym, uh, and it's the maintenance. Uh, you should do on uh, your penis so that way it um, it can expand. It gets oxygen. For instance, a, a man will only get uh, if, if he has uh, intercourse. That's the only way that he gets blood into the penis and uh, more more blood than usual. I mean, you do get blood when you're not erect, when the penis is not erect. But when the penis is erect, you get more blood gushing into there. There's 40 times more blood flow to the penis when it's in erect state than when it's not erect. So you get more blood, more oxygen in it, right? But if you don't use a penis pump, the only time that you really get more blood flow into it is when you have intercourse, right? Well, yeah. what if you don't have intercourse uh, for a month? What if you know you're single, you're divorced, and uh, you don't have intercourse, but you don't have any issues? But if you let the penis go for months and not use it, what's gonna happen? Mm-hmm. It's gonna shrink. The muscle's gonna get smaller, right? Yeah. It's not expanding. It's not expanding. It's not getting enough oxygen. It's not getting the blood gushes into it. Yeah. And over time, 
it, let's say for you haven't had intercourse in about a year or so, there happened is that the the uh, if you're not getting an, an an erection, what happened is that the muscle in the penis start to have scar tissue, like you know a tissue that settles in, so it's harder for the penis to expand later. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you like, let's say if your if your arm is in a like a a a, a cast and you don't use it, when it comes out, the muscles become really hard. It has scar tissues into there, mm. and it's harder for it to expand. Yeah. So, uh, because we see that a lot in patients that has broken bones, because their muscles get atrophy and their muscle gets you know more collagen uh, or uh, scar tissue into there. So men that that do not have intercourse frequently or men that has erectile dysfunction more so that you should use the penis pump to maintain the the uh, the muscle uh size the mu and and bring more oxygen to your penis muscle whether you have erectile dysfunction or whether you don't have a uh, uh, erectile dysfunction uh to just to maintain the health of it and i suggest that you do it three times a week mm -hmm. uh it's same it's the same recommendation if you go to the gym right three yeah. times a week the, I recommend you do it three times a week. You uh, suction for 10 minutes, deflate, and then you suction uh, and use the the uh, penis pump to do it again for 10 minutes. And then, you know, you bring the pressure down. I'd say you do it twice. Uh, you can do it in one sitting or you can do it twice a day, uh, three times a week. So every man, no matter what their age is, I, I believe that you need to do a penis pump. And I can tell you, my, my nurse husband, He's a Marine and he's healthy and everything. He's 31. He uses the penis pump every day because he sees it as an exercise. Mm -hmm. and, and they frequently have intercourse. Uh, th this isn't actually a plus for a penis pump for women that are listening to this show. Is mm -hmm. that uh, women, if you're spending a lot of time with oral sex with your guy and you know, um, you know, I mean, I can give an example that sometimes it could take up to 30 minutes or so, right? Yeah. It's, it's fatiguing for a woman to do that. Well, <laughs> if he uses the penis pump before intercourse, it can really reduce the time that she has to, you know, stimulate him uh, yeah. to only minutes because he's already erect, you yeah. know? So you can use the penis pump as a foreplay before intercourse. And so that way you're you're erect and it just requires just a little bit of stimulation and you're ready to rock and roll. <laughs> so it could be used as a foreplay, it could and then it can be used as a form of exercise. And especially for those men that maybe their spouse and their partner travels and you don't see each other for maybe a month. Well, maybe in between, use the penis pump, you know? Yeah. To maintain the the health and, and the oxygenation of your penis. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been a big fan of it for a while because, I mean, I got into this whole space from the male enhancement side of things. And that's kind of what brought me into it. You know, the bath mate, the, the love, you know, penis pumps and all that good stuff. But the one question I had now, because you mentioned how, you know, it's overall kind of like more from a maintenance perspective. What about for growth? Like even for a young, healthy guy like for myself, like I kind of did it the same way that you're talking about, like interval pumping where I would pump up and then, you know, just kind of maintain a lower and just kind of go for there from there. Is there any protocol that you recommend? Like if you just want to see, you know, more growth eventually or? Well, OK, it is it's a yes and a no and maybe a maybe to that answer, because but a lot of people think, well, if I use a penis pump, uh, my uh, my penis will be uh, bigger. Yes, we that that can happen, uh, and maybe by half an inch to an inch in girth and uh, length. However, you would have to do that every day mm -hmm. consistently. Okay, you have to do that every day consistently, and if you stop, even if you stop for like a week or or so, uh, or, you know, I would say if you stop for like three weeks. The, the penis will go back to its uh, original size before you pump. So it's, it's kind of like going to the gym for your muscles, right? Yeah. So if you go to the gym frequently, you're going to have that muscle bulk. But let's say you don't go to the gym in about three weeks or a month or so. What happened? Those muscles start to kind of, you know, yeah. uh, get less bulky, right? Mm -hmm. Well, same thing with the penis. So if you do that, then you will see the increase in size, but no more than about an inch. No more uh, yeah. than about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. Uh, but you have to do it every day to have that effect. So that's why the answer is yes, you can, but you have to do it a lot. You have to do it like every day. You have to be consistent with it. 
Um, but, but, you know, just know that for to if you are, you know, male to female, that is the girth that count, not so much the length mm -hmm. that count in stimulating your partner. Uh, yeah. so, so, you know, you want to be careful of that. Some, you know, I've, I've seen some patients that, you know, like, oh, I'm eight inches long and six uh, and five, five inches in girth. I want more. I'm like, God, you know, I don't know if any woman can handle that, you know, <laughs> because the length, the length is when it gets longer, it's going to hit the, um, the cervix. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, which is the opening of the uterus inside the, the, the vagina canal. That's going to hurt the woman, right? So it, that's it's the, when it's too long. It's the girth is what's stimulatory because uh, all the uh, sensation or the feeling uh, is on the opening of the vagina, just like about maybe an inch inside. And that's where uh, and, and that's where the G spot is, about an inch uh, mm -hmm. or two in, on the top of the vaginal uh, canal. So you don't you don't need to have eight inch, you know. Uh, a small penis is defined as less than three inch, um, mm -hmm. and so most most men when they're not erect is you know three inch or more. So uh, it doesn't mean. And sometimes there's a fallacy thinking that if you're small when you're when you're uh, not erect or flaccid, that you're going to be small when you're erect. That's not true, mm -hmm. all right? Because some men can. Remember the penis when it's erected, it uh, has forty times more blood flow. Forty times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of blood flow, right? Yeah. So when you're small, when you're when when it looks like you're kind of small, when the essentiality, when you're erect, is totally different. Yeah. Or necessarily, if a guy is, uh, you know, somewhat, you know, large when he's not erect, doesn't mean that he's gonna be very large when when he erect does that does that make sense oh, 100%, it, it, yeah. it, it it's really is relative so you could be like maybe five inch when you're not erect but you can only six inch or six and a half when you're erect or another guy that can be four inch when he's not erect could be six and a half inch when mm -hmm. he's erect uh yeah. and it, it all depends upon your mu your your muscle flexibility down there and and gen some of it is genetic component but Back to the point of penis pump, it it is for to, to for the health of your penis. I believe every man should uh, know about it and use it, and it's not shameful at all. Take mm -hmm. that shame away. You know, <laughs> it's like brushing your teeth. <laughs> yeah. it's something you do every day, brushing your teeth. And the penis pump that I have that I recommend that we that we uh, have is that you can use it in the shower. So I love that because every you know, most people, most of us take a shower in the morning or at night. Right. Mm -hmm. When you're in the shower, you know, the penis pump that I recommend that I, I have here, it's called a hydro pump, is yeah. that you put water in, in it and then you start pumping and and water creates a better suction. Then when you don't use water and you can just leave it on the penis while you're using soap to shower your uh, your body and and your hair. And then next thing you know, you know, take it out and do it again so you can have like a great shower and exercise your penis at the same time. Yeah, no, 100 percent. That's a good thing about the bath made, too, is it's like, you know, you can use it with the water, which actually helps with, you know, the tissue being a little bit more nice and soft, you know, able to stretch a little bit better, which is something you do want. And I mean, for myself, I remember when I bought it, granted, I got the one that was too big, so I kind of screwed up there, <laughs> you know, like lengthwise, <laughs> I was like, okay, this is made for a horse. I got the wrong one. <laughs> so I was a little bit upset about that. However, you know, I got my, my air pumps and I use those quite frequently because I'm like, you know, I found that well, good for you. They, they were really helpful in just making sure that, you know, I maintained it. However, one thing that I did see on your YouTube channel was um, the connection between bodybuilding and uh like you know causing ed because the reason why i bring this up because in my prep at the end of my competition you know like when i was prepping for competition like yo my libido was down to the floor i'm pretty sure you know i my hormone <laughs> is all the way they were tanked and they felt awful and i even brought this up because you know I, I did a lot of stuff to maintain you know proper penis health and i found that for myself i'm like yo you know i lost some girth i lost all kinds of good stuff that I've worked for for years. And my wife is one that kind of brought that up. So I just want to know your take on this and, you know, how you can maintain um, good penile health while you're bodybuilding, you know, especially from the extreme side of things. Exactly. You know, um, you can. But as you know, sometimes when you bodybuild, you can take additional steroids, right? Oh, to yeah. enhance. Uh, but if you bodybuild naturally, 
Yep. If you bodybuild naturally and don't take additional steroid or growth hormone or testosterone, because I know that a, a lot of men that, that bodybuild, they shoot themselves up with more testosterone, three times the testosterone yeah. level than they should. Or then on top of that, they add growth hormone. On top of that, they add more steroid, right? Mm -hmm. Well, your body is operate on a balance. Our body is on a balance. When you get too much or something, what happens? There's created imbalance, yep. and your body's gonna convert those steroids into a downstream, a different type of, of of hormone that's usually you don't make. Like for instance, if men take a lot of testosterone or a lot of steroids, what happens? It gets converted to a female hormone, so mm -hmm. they actually become more female and, uh, than they want to be, and it actually decreases the amount of testosterone they have in their body. That's why your libido is tank. That's why there's moodiness, right? Mm -hmm. Anger, moody, because the testosterone is being usurped or being converted to uh, another hormone. Yeah. Uh, so just know that your body, when it senses too much of something, it's gonna try to, what does it do? Try to lower balance it, it so that yeah. way to try to balance it, right? And then when it gets too much, it becomes overload. And what happens? It becomes imbalanced like this, and that's when you're gonna have starting having the side effects. So I, I do hormone replacement therapy with my, my men, and there's I always try to find the sweet spot where just enough to get that benefit, but not high enough to get that side effect. Mm -hmm. And our body, everyone has a sweet spot. Like, for, you know, uh, the testosterone uh, range for men is from 300 to 900, right? Mm -hmm. But in a lot of men, you know, some men operate, their sweet spot is at 900 or 800, but some men's sweet spot is at 400 and they're fine with that. It's all within the range, but your sweet spot's different. It's kind of like, you know, almost like how much sugar you like in your coffee, you know? Yeah. Some, everybody has a different sweet spot. That, and that not necessarily mean you know, the range is from 300 to 900, but, and, and if the doctor measures and you're at 500, but you feel crappy, you know, you have low libido, you uh, you don't have a good erection and you feel tired and you and you get uh, and you're constant, you're not focused. Well, it may just mean that may, may, maybe you're just a high operator and you need to be a 700 mm -hmm. and dead. But when you drop down to 500, you're starting to feel that even though it's still within normal range, but that's not normal for you. Yeah, so that's the whole point I'm, I'm trying to explain to men is that everybody operate in a sweet, a different sweet zone. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, if you're within range, doesn't mean you're, you're normal for you. Yeah. Interesting. Cause I mean, for me, it's like that I went natural, you know, for me, it's, I already, you know, I knew a lot about, you know, the guys that were taking tests and I seen some of the moodiness, like you mentioned when they come off of it and kind of like the estrogenic effects of it. Like one of the biggest things that I don't want is gyno. So that's like, yeah. where I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm not interested in all that. And for me, it's like, unless you're at the professional level, like me personally, I just see no point of it really. Cause like, mm -hmm. unless you're making all kinds of money, I'm like, meh, you know, <laughs> unless you're a professional baseball player or something, you know, I try not to mess around with that at all, but yeah. you know, that, that's kind of why. And, and, and you can definitely have good muscle definition, uh, without all of that. It's, it, you, you, you can tell who you, I can tell, I can look at somebody's body. I can tell whether you use it or not because mm -hmm. the muscle looks large and glistening and puffy. Yeah. Uh, that, that's when you're, you're on, the, uh, you know, uh, some enhancer, some steroid enhancer, but, but, uh, you, you know, the best thing is that if you want to bodybuild and look, and look great naturally, you're actually increasing your testosterone. The more muscle you have that is natural without extra, you know, stuff, you, you actually make more testosterone. Yes. All right. So for a man, if you want to increase your testosterone, build more muscle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, build more muscle. You literally, if you build more muscle and if you eat a proper diet, like a Mediterranean uh, diet uh, and, pro and get proper sleep, decrease stress, you will see your testosterone level literally double. I have seen that in my patient uh, where we look at your their testosterone level was low. And they start, they change their diet, they start exercising more, they come in, they look, you know, they're more muscular, their, their uh, testosterone level literally double up. And you can see that effect within like six weeks. And I guess that's another thing before you ever recommend TRT or HRT, how important is it for them to really tighten up their lifestyle skill, like lifestyle habits, actually? 
Because I imagine that's got to play a massive factor when you're kind of telling them, like, hey, man, your testosterone sucks. However, you only sleep three hours a night. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. So when I recommend TRT, I recommend the whole holistic approach because mm -hmm. I believe that you, for a man, especially for a man, that those listeners are listening, you're a guy, and for women too, diet is critical mm -hmm. for your sex life and diet is critical for your testosterone. So if you eat a healthy diet, you're most likely going to have a good testosterone level. And what I mean by healthy, more fruits, vegetables, uh, lean meat, you know, don't eat anything that's in a box or a plastic. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't eat anything that's not man-made. He says, sure. eat what the earth grow for you, is what exactly. I tell my patients. Eat what the earth grow for you, you know. The earth the, the earth didn't grow for you potato chip. That's man-made, no. <laughs> right? The earth didn't grow for you a, a, a cookie. That's man-made, right? Yeah. So, But the earth will grow you fruits, you know. It will grow you all the vegetables that you want, you know. Uh, and, you know, eat fish and chicken and, and stay away from red meat. And, you know, red meat should be maybe once a week, but not um, every day. And bread is, is man-made, right? Mm -hmm. The earth didn't grow bread. No. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we it's man-made. We cook that, and we, but it has to be from grain, which, again, is also processed as well. So the diet is very, very critical for a man. So mm -hmm. once once you start seeing your little uh, belly, you start to have fat in your love handles, then that's when a man should start thinking, okay, I got to sharpen up my diet. Mm -hmm. Because if one thing he, he can do, if, if the listeners are listening right now, one thing you can do, if you want to start increasing your testosterone, that will improve your sex life, increase your uh, the testosterone, help with focus, help with energy, help with developing muscle, and uh, and help with uh, losing more uh, fat loss is your diet, mm -hmm. your diet. Then secondarily exercise. All right. Uh, if you're gonna do weight lift, you gotta add a little bit of aerobic on there. So I recommend 45 minutes of aerobic and 45 minutes of uh, of uh, weight uh, mm -hmm. for an hour and a half, three times a week. That's really all you need and then of course like you said you know sleeping is important why is sleeping important because your body heal when you're sleeping mm -hmm. when you're sleeping is when you heal physically from 10 p.m to 2 a.m your body heal physically that's when it start taking away all the dead tissue and, and it start to uh, um you know get rid of it and make new tissue and yeah. then from 2 a.m to 6 a.m that's when you heal psychologically that's when your brain starts to get kind of, okay, I've got to heal, I've got to repair, and so forth. So when when you don't sleep uh, the, the whole seven hours, you're going to cut down your physical healing and your emotional healing, your psychological healing. So that's why when you don't sleep well, what happens? The next day you're groggy, you can't concentrate, you feel tired, right? That's because your yeah. body's not healing. Your body's not healing at all, and you compound that. So testosterone is made when you're asleep. So it's made at nighttime. So your testicle produced testosterone and it made more uh, testosterone at nighttime. So guess what happened? You don't sleep well. Well, you yeah. don't sleep well. You're not making, your body's not manufacturing enough testosterone. That's the reason why you have morning wood, right? Yeah. You have morning wood because your testosterone level is the highest around 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, is, when, uh, is when it's the highest level. But if you're, uh, so the most critical thing is for men is diet and then uh, um, uh, um, exercise, sleep, and the other thing is alcohol. Ooh. Alcohol plays a big dampener in uh, lowering testosterone uh, and, and also in uh, inflammation because alcohol is synthetic. Yeah. It's not me. The earth didn't grow alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. <laughs> uh, yes, unfortunately. But, you know, there's a par. You know, try to keep down to se for seven to ten a, a, a week. Not mm -hmm. that bad. That's a drink a day. A yeah. drink and a half a day. You know, seven to ten a week. You should be fine. You should be fine. You're seven to ten a week. But if you're going to be hanging out with f friends and family in the weekend, just think just think of the number, seven to ten. Don't yeah. go more than that. Because if you go more than that, then you're going to start seeing inflammation. Uh, so you're going to start seeing inflammation, meaning what that means is that uh, it's going to affect your blood vessels. So it's going to decrease uh, uh, blood flow. And it's also going to decrease your testosterone level as well. So those are the big three, uh, four. But I also want to mention smoking as well, yeah. whether it's either cigarettes or, or vaping or even marijuana. 
uh, again, that man made, right? Yeah. Uh, that man made as well, too. And your body's organic, meaning that your body's natural. But when you give it something synthetic, what is it going to do? It's going to be a shock to the body. It's yeah. going to go, oh, I don't recognize this. So then your liver and your lungs have to convert it to something it recognizes. And then your kidney have to work hard on getting rid of it and you're out in your body. And mm -hmm. so is your, your intestine. So you get yeah. rid of it through stool, you get rid of it through, uh, through urine, right? But when it's, it's synthetic or something that your body doesn't make, it has to work double for it to process it. So during, that's why when it's processing it, the toxic stuff that is synthetic start to affect your, your organs and your structure. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So if, if like, it's like, it's like a factory that normally makes, you know, light bulb, all of a sudden you throw in, well, okay, you, you're going to start making lampshade. Well, it's going to have to, you know, conform and to going to have to make some adjustment, right? Yeah. During that process. And during that process, there's going to be some remnant of that lampshade that's going to be, you know, deposited in the floor. So that's why you start having side effects when you start taking synthetic. So your body said, let's, for instance, if you were going to feed your body like uh, you're going to feed your body uh, like, um, you know, uh, um, let's say cucumber, salad, tomatoes and a little bit of sesame oil, a little bit of vinegar and, you know, like a nice natural salad, right? When you eat that, your body just go, oh, oh, I recognize it. I don't have to do anything. I'll just process it and just go on cruise control, you yeah. know, because it's organic. It, it, I mean, it's natural to what the body recognizes. But if you start giving it like potato chip and, uh, and you start giving it like a monster drink, your body's going to go, Oh wait a minute! This is not this is not what I'm used to. I better start kind of, you know, start up the factory and start to process this. Yeah, interesting. Cause no, I mean it makes perfect sense. And I mean I've always been a big believer in that too. That's why I try to go all organic for you know with the foods that I eat. It's like hey, if it's got more than like 50 ingredients, it's probably not good for me. You know, chances of it being poisonous are probably high. You know, and the fact that it's probably loaded with pesticides and a whole bunch of other things. You know. And the more I go into that rabbit hole too, you know, I find out about like aluminum fillers and stuff to just bind mm -hmm. our food together. I'm like, yo, this is so awful, right? So to your point, I 100% agree with that. But when it comes to ED itself, what are, because you, you mentioned alcohol being bad, but you kind of caught my attention there because you mentioned weed. And I did see in one of your videos where you're talking about how CBD oil is starting to be integrated into erectile medicine. But um, how does cannabis, like just smoking weed, like how does it affect like your erections in a positive or negative kind of way? Cause I, I myself, I don't really smoke weed, but you know, just out of curiosity sake, how does it affect it? Well, it's so, you know, weed is like alcohol. Initially when you take it a little bit of it, it makes you relax. So it does help you uh, feel relaxed. So it does help you get in the mood. So in order for you to get an erection, your mind and your penis have to be relaxed. That's the mm -hmm. only way for you to get an erection. All right. Yeah. You have to be in the mood. You have to be aroused. You have to be relaxed. But if you're tense, if you're fatigued or if you're distracted or if you're anxious, you're not going to get an erection. So it, I always tell the guys, I say, if you're going to meet that beautiful girl and you know you're going to get it on tonight, don't think about the anxiety or what has happened in the past. You think mm -hmm. about, you know, what the, the good thing that's going to happen. It's the same way you go in to take a test, right? You go in and take a test and you keep thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail. What happened? You're going to fail. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You're going to fail. So you go in the test. And what do you tell yourself? I am going to knock this over. I am going to beat this. I'm going to pass. Right. What's well, the same thing when you're about to have sex? You're going to, you know, you, you, you're going to have to relax your mind. You're going to enjoy the moment and enjoy, uh, enjoy each other. So what, what I'm trying to lead to is that marijuana uh, uh, will help you relax initially. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And then, but if you take too much of it, Mar and you know, if you take too much of it, and it depends on what type of marijuana too, right? Yes, yeah. marijuana is a plant that's grown naturally, right? But we don't know where the marijuana is coming from. What weed, where <laughs> is it coming from? Yeah. Seriously, right? Where is it grown? Pesticide, who's processing it? Is there any type of processing that goes in with that? You know, and and I think I think vaping is even worse after nicotine or even marijuana because vape is totally synthetic, right? Yeah, it, it's, it's I mean like... Uh, it's it's synthetic, and you're you're trying to put something synthetic in your lungs, 
your lung is the most sensitive mucous membrane in the whole entire body. All right, your lungs have the same membrane as your eye. Would you put vape stuff in your eye? No. no. <laughs> Why would you do that to your lung? Because the, the, it's the same membrane. It's the same cell that is in your eye as it is in your lung. So when you smoke, you inhale that vapor, it goes in your lung. What do you think happened, right? So yeah. that can it cause tissue damage in the lining of the lung. So the same way with marijuana. You know, marijuana is a smoke that you inhale. So when you inhale smoke, that's toxic to the lungs. Yeah. All right. So that's toxic to the lung. And, you know, so there's that little thing, a little bit, make you relax. Maybe you should stop. But if you do it every day, it's going to be toxic to the lung. And what makes oxygen in your body? Your lungs. Your lungs, right? yeah. Your, your lungs is what gives you more oxygen. So the more you inhale, the less the oxygen you're going you're gonna to produce for your body. So, you're, so your organs and so forth are not going to get enough oxygen. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's not good for the health of, of your organs, especially in your brain and especially in your heart and, and then especially in your penis, which need more blood. flow. remember, I keep reverting back to when you get an erection, 40 you get times. 40 times more blood flow. Uh -huh. So so what do you need those bl those blood vessels in the uh, penis to be very healthy? Yeah. You need it to be very healthy so it can expand 40 times. Yeah. You see? So that's how weed or even nicotine or even uh, vaping and the vapor affect yeah uh, uh can uh can affect um um you know erection because of the toxic nature of the lung not being able to extract enough oxygen and then it affect it's a downstream effect of affecting all the blood vessels as well too that's so, super interesting i mean I've always been in the same boat. I'm like, when it comes to like me, I personally, I love cigarettes, but I try not to smoke them, but I love cigarettes. You know, like I've always loved, I mean, since I was like 18, right? But I'm like, you know what? I know this isn't good for me, so I'm not gonna smoke it. But you know, now when, you know, I go to work in other places, I see all these kids smoking those vapes, right? And I'm like, in my mind, I'm just like, this looks like it's even worse than cigarettes because cigarettes is tobacco and all that other stuff, which is not good for you. Right. And I know this. Everybody knows this. But the thing is, it's kind of when I see these vapors. Right. It's like you charge it in like a Bluetooth USB type thing. And then I see the oil, which is like some resin. I'm like, this looks like it's, you know, potentially worse, man. Like <laughs> the amount of smoke yeah. that comes out. And I asked the guy, I'm like, yo, bro, this smells like, you know, Cheerios or something. He's like, yeah, man, vaping is good for you. But my question now is what's going to happen with this generation of vapors? And what do you foresee in the future? You know, just in regards to their health, like obviously, you know, from a perspective of like erectile issues, you know, I see mm -hmm. that in the future. But yeah. what are some of the other issues that you, you think are probably going to happen if you could predict? Well, yeah, like you're, we're, 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 we're probably going to see we're probably going to see more lung lung damage uh, mm -hmm. in younger, a uh, younger uh, population more than ever. Mm -hmm. We're going to see the lung damage. So why? why is, uh, and then we're probably going to see more inflammation. Uh, so that's going to lead to when you have inflammation, that's going to lead to decreased uh, hormone and decrease uh, uh, decrease healing. So you're going to start seeing more chronic diseases like high blood pressure. You're going to start seeing diabetes earlier and uh, those are population. Huh. Uh, yeah, you're going to start seeing that. You're going to probably see cognitive decline or brain function decline earlier. Normally you would see that around maybe 80s and somebody that's in the 80s. Now you may see that earlier uh, as well, too. I mean, I'm starting to see uh, men in their 20s with ED uh, because of uh, smoking. Well, you know, because now I, I mean, I'm, I'm, some of my patients that I see, they, they say when they're 20, they would put a marijuana along with a tobacco and wrap it up and smoke it at the same time. Yeah, split. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. and you know, one of my patients smoked like this big, you know, like a thumb, <laughs> like you know, once a day with those combination, and then he drinks a lot of alcohol every day. Uh, and uh, yeah, so those he said I was not a good boy, so he said that was he doing it every day. And at at, at twenty six, he had ED, but he had the body of a uh, you know of a builder. He had you know an eight pack and. He's all muscle, but he has ED because Why? of the damage of, of you know, the combo of the nicotine and, and the marijuana. And, uh, oh, he was also smoking. Uh, yeah, so smoking and also the uh, uh, drinking alcohol as well to, at the age of 26. Wow. Yeah, I wow. took a picture of him because I said, wait a minute, I want to take a picture of you because your body looked pristine. 
You know, yeah. your body is so healthy, but yet you're not healthy on the inside. So that's yeah. what I, that's what I'm trying to allude to with your question that you have. Yeah. Is that, yeah, these people may look really healthy, but on the inside, they're not at all. Hmm. And what the consequence will be that they'll, they'll have more lung damage uh, than, you know, uh, than uh, uh, people that doesn't smoke. Uh, and that's not good because what, you know, COVID and what potential of other viruses that are coming out in the future, what do you yeah. want to do? You want to have good lungs, right? You want to have good immunity uh, yeah. to fight off all these infections. Jeez. I mean, it is scary, but at the same time, it kind of seems like, you know, we're shooting ourselves in the foot as a society. Mm -hmm. But that's obviously where you come in, Dr. Trong. So tell us more before we kind of wrap things up about what you do and about curing ED and how you go about in some of, you know, your protocols along with, you know, some of the supplements I see there. Yeah. So my approach, and that's why I'm so passionate about that's particularly sexual health for men, because I feel that men are being brainwashed and thinking, you know what, in order for you to get an erection, you need a pill uh, uh, to help you get an erection. For me, it's like you need a pill to help your eye blink because, uh, <laughs> no, seriously, because you laugh at that. But you, I will tell you this, the, the way the man's body is made, you are programmed to get an erection. The mm -hmm. way that your body is made and how it is because it's an efficient machine because your body, our body, so women, we are made to procreate. We are made to carry on, to have sex and carry on the humankind. Mm -hmm. All right. The way our mind thinks, the way our body is, is to carry on the humankind, to continue the humankind. All right. So, so having said that, you know, it is natural for you to get an erection. Men have a hundred times more testosterone level than a woman. Mm -hmm. And when a man, uh, uh, um, you know, senses that he his erection is not as good, it's really because there's an imbalance inside his body. Something going on that's causing that. All right. Yeah. It's like all of a sudden, if you blink your eye, all of a sudden you can't blink your eye. It's because maybe there's an infection. Maybe there's a sty or something. You want to look for the cause of that, right? Yeah. But we're not conditioned to think about that and that men that's kind of like, oh, you know what? I, you know, I'm, I'm not as firm with the last, you know, the last girl I did. It happened two times. I'm going to pop in Viagra because, you know, that, that it's kind of like a natural choice, right? I'm mm -hmm. going to take Viagra or Cialis instead of like, wait a minute, stop. And just kind of think, well, maybe there's something going on inside that's creating this imbalance. So I'm passionate about it because my, my husband had uh, ED uh, uh, as well, too, because he was on heart medication. And I'm passionate in changing the, 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 the thinking uh, that you, you need to take a medication to, to, to help you with your sex life. And I want to create a revolution and changing our, our thought about this. That's, and you laugh when I said you need a medication for you to blink your eye. That's absolutely <laughs> true. You yeah. know, it's kind of like when you have chest pain, right? Do you take a medication? You go online and try to take a medication to help you with your chest pain? No. Mm -hmm. Your condition is to have chest pain. You go to the ER, right? To make sure it's yeah. not your heart. Well, it's the same thing. Men should start thinking, hey, you know what? If if my if I'm not getting records I used to be, well, and you know, the first thing I should do is go see the doctor and maybe get your blood work first. Yeah. And and see what's going on to get my blood pressure checked, to make sure I'm not a diabetic, to check out my testosterone level, and then in, in th uh, introspection and thinking, well, how's my sleeping? Am I sleeping seven hours a day? Am I vaping, smoking? How's my alcohol intake? How's my diet? Am I exercising? If a man start thinking about that, when he first have ED, he will never, ever, ever need Viagra, and he yeah. will never need any other interventional treatment beside that. So, any man that listen to this, and if you are, if you are feel like you're having issues, and you know, start do introspection, and yeah, with what I just did, within maybe first three months of that, okay, and 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 stop getting, stop uh, get, uh, getting in your head thinking it, it you, because the more you think that you know, you have an issue, the more you, you, your mind will, will make you yeah. believe that you have uh, an issue. It's all about positive thinking, right? Mm -hmm. So my approach is, is comprehensive in that I feel that in order to, uh, to treat ED, you have to heal from within with using those natural approach. That's why I have an, uh, um, an online uh, a coaching program where I help men to kind of sort things out and kind of figure out 
uh, a path where they need to focus on to get themselves out of ED. That allows me to help men all over the world for this. And then if they need further treatment for, for like men that had been taking Viagra for 20 years or for 10 years, and then they find out that those medicine doesn't do anything for them anymore, that's when they come to my office and we have a, a system, a treatment system that's called the Get Hard system where I, 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 where we treat, we, how we treat, uh, restore erection again and get you out of ED is we use um, your own stem cell um, um, and we harvest your own stem cell and uh, put that back into the penis to in, induce more blood flow. We do focus shockwave, which is uses sound wave technology yeah. to repair the blood flow in the penis. And then we also uh, use Botox uh, Botox, the same Botox that women get in their face for the yeah. wrinkles. Well, because it relaxes the muscle. If we in, uh, we inject Botox into the penis, it relaxes the penis. Remember what I said earlier, in order for you to get an erection, your mind and your penis have to be relaxed. Well, we're mm -hmm. relaxing the penis for you. You don't have to worry <laughs> about that anymore. You just got to worry and work on your mind. And then we have supplements. And I believe in supplements with the one I have uh, here. And then we also give them an app. So they they can start um, focusing on on diet uh, and exercise uh, changes and sleep monitoring. So I I treat from a comprehensive approach in healing from the inside out because that's yeah. the only way to get rid of ED. It's not taking medicine, guys. You know some people are proud that they're taking twenty years of taking Viagra and it works. <laughs> but it's kind of like hello. Yeah, you, it's like you should be proud of that. No, it shouldn't be a bad that you should say that you need that because you're essentially saying, oh, here's my sex life. I'm just going to take, take a pill because you know what? It's not going to work yeah. one day and you're going to end up with like, OK, uh, what am I going to do? So now, you know, a pharmaceutical company and a doctor, you know, that do surgery now are, put, uh, are now. Well, if you if you take uh, ED medicine, the next step is a penile replacement surgery. Oh what? Gosh. I know. I'm like, you know, you only have one penis and, you know, you want to replace it with some two silicone, uh, two nah. silicone rod that goes in your penis. That is the most unnatural thing I can ever think of. Yeah. But now more and more men are getting that. And I and there's a lot of complication with that surgery. And, and you because you also lose sensation too when you when you have the penile replacement surgery and there's complications. Yeah. Right. The penis is not made to have two silicone rods in it <laughs> uh, to be used during intercourse. So that's why there's a lot of complication. But yeah. now I, I see it being talked about as if, oh, you know, it's like pulling out your teeth. It's not. <laughs> it's actually much more than that. You know, when you do a joint replacement surgery, you have two knees, two hips. Right. But you only got yeah. one penis. Yeah, I, <laughs> if I it doesn't want... go around, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not looking forward to losing that. I'm trying to preserve it as best as possible. But Dr. And you Ann... can preserve it. You can yes. preserve it. But you're just not taught that. It's kind of like you don't know what you don't know. And there's an ignorance, right? Mm -hmm. We just don't know, right? So any guy, any person that listens to this podcast can save their sex life, save their marriage, save their relationship yeah. uh, as well. What I just outlined, honestly, what just outlined, if you just follow the five steps that I've given you, you will never need to have another medication again to help you get with your sex life. And that's a perfect way to end this podcast. Dr. Trung, this was an absolute pleasure. And I am going to have to have you on again because I still got more questions. But it was an <laughs> absolute blast. And I just want to say thank you for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me here. And until next time, guys, we'll see you then.